Equalization. It's a concept we all learned in acronyms like serene, nerds, all of these elements designed to teach us principles of anchor construction. But should we equalize all of the time? Are there examples where equalization and the attempt at equalization can actually get us into trouble? Let's take a closer look at the principle of equalization. Let's see if we need to equalize everything all of the time. To give a little context, an anchor used to just be the human body. One may employ something like a shoulder belay, where one finds a stance, has the rope over their shoulder, and now belays their partner up in this way here. Reasonably speaking, this didn't feel very secure. So perhaps a piece of gear may be added. Back in the day, perhaps it was a piton. In case this primary system were to fail, there's something here backing me up. But in this case, the anchor is simply a backup for the primary element of security, which is my body. Well, so what changed? When we think about an anchor, we think about an anchor as separate from ourselves. This is good news. This allows us a lot more freedom to be separate from the anchor. The trade-off here is that an anchor being separate from us means that the anchor is subject to all of the load. Whereas in this case, my body is subject to the load until failure of that, in which case I have something here backing me up. So let's look at anchors now in a modern context and examine why equalization may be a problem in some circumstances. There are, of course, many differences in climbing today versus climbing decades ago. One big difference in rock climbing is that falling is just expected now. <laughs> because of this fact, combined with the action of separating ourselves from the anchor, not only has the hardware gotten stronger and the materials we construct our anchors with gotten stronger and lighter, but the methods we use to construct these systems has had to be reimagined as well. This is where acronyms like the ones previously mentioned come into play and help guide our thinking to ensure each one of our anchors can stand up to these heavier demands. So let's take a look at this anchor. I'm kidding, let's take a look at this anchor. Let's examine this anchor utilizing an acronym like SERENE. First, it's strong, meaning every piece of anatomy in this system is strong enough to stand up to any loads we may introduce to it. I'll go further here and say that every piece of anatomy by itself can stand up to any loads that we can place on it. More on that later. Next, it's redundant meaning every piece of anatomy in the anchor has a backup in case a single part were to fail. I have a whole video on this topic, so a link to that will appear at the end of this video. Equalized, the subject at play here. Simple enough, we are just ensuring that we directionalize our anchor via any number of means, such as this knot in the circle, so that all parts of the anchor are receiving equal load. And finally, no extension. Extension is to say that in the event of a component failing, in this case one of the bolts or a leg of the anchor, the master point will extend towards the load rapidly and with a huge amount of force, shock loading the remaining components. Enormous forces can be generated from this kind of event, often strong enough to actually cause total system failure in many contexts. While extremely rare, this is an important principle to stand by in order to avoid these types of forces. It doesn't take much time to look at this anchor and figure out that if you just lean back and lean a few inches to one side or the other, the near entirety of the load will go to just a single component of the system. This may not be a problem when 25 kilonewton bolts are our components, but we will see that with less ideal components in a purely traditional climbing setting, climbing parties may get themselves into trouble when they dogmatically stick to the principle of equalization. Quite early on, it was common to use what we now refer to as a sliding X or a magic X. That's where we answer the concept of needing redundancy 
by simply taking one of the strands here in our sling and actually bringing it down to a point here and then making a twist in just one of those strands. Now, when I clip into this master point, I've clipped into two closed loops of material, which now, upon failure, will capture my carabiner. However, what this will create is a great deal of extension. In recent decades, tools like the quad have come into vogue. And in this case, we have four separate strands isolated by load limiting knots on either side that limit the possibility of extension in the event that one of our components were to fail. Again, the goal here is that we are adjusting as the action happens in order to continuously put the same amount of load on both components or all of the components throughout our time in the system. This is a great concept. However, research has shown us that when we load this strand and our carabiner slides along the strand into its new position, you see big spikes in load to each of the components. And then sometimes equalization will happen eventually once the friction on the carabiner has subsided and allows it to settle into one location, distributing load to both. So we can see here that equalization is a problem and doesn't always happen. However, we can assume that equalization and the attempt at it is totally fine, assuming that each one of the components in our system can adequately support any load that we put on it. One where we have three pieces of gear, each one more than capable on its own here of accepting the load that we may put on this anchor. Up here we have a big black diamond purple X4, and this is rated at nine kilonewtons. Down here we have a green ultralight black diamond camelot, rated at 12 kilonewtons. And then below that we have a gold black diamond ultralight camelot, also rated at 12 kilonewtons. Unfortunately, in the real world, not all pieces and components of our anchor are created equally. There are going to be times when we arrive to a stance and simply because of rack depletion, because we've climbed the fist size crack and now we no longer have fist size pieces for the anchor that requires fist size gear, gear is required that is less than adequate. While some pieces of our system may be able to handle these loads all by itself, there are others that won't. It's in these edge case scenarios where equalization becomes a problem and we need to come up with solutions that allow us to circumvent those pieces that we desire less and allow us to distribute load to them with a bit more intention. In our anchors, it's important that we have at least one piece in our system that would be capable of withstanding any load that we may put on it. And that is a confident rule that we should have in any anchor construction that we have. In this example, a climber may like to imagine that they are aggregating the strengths of all of these pieces down to the master point. In this case, 12 plus four plus seven would give us 23 here at our master point. However, this isn't exactly what happens when we're talking about equalization as a concept. Rather, what's happening is that our load is arriving to our master point and now being distributed throughout the system to our other two or three or four or five components. Equalization may be fine if all of my pieces were to be able to accept a load in the event that another piece were to fail. However, in this instance, the piece most likely to be able to hold the entire load is this 12 kilonewton piece right up here. This is an example where we don't necessarily want all of these pieces taking equal load. Rather, this is a better example of where we want to distribute with intention to these pieces in a way that exploits the full strength and integrity of this anchor to a much better degree of certainty. A more equitable way of distributing load 
that prioritizes our largest piece and will give the load a greater chance of being distributed more to this piece of gear is to make gestures like this. So using my cordelette, I can create a clove hitch here. I usually like to do it close to the knot and clip my upper piece of gear. Now, just a little ways down from that, with some slack, I'll tie another clove hitch. And then fix that. I like to take the slack out of my clove hitches before I go to distribute them to the rest of the anchor. Now, using this long piece I have here coming from both pieces, I can now take that long piece and just pass it through the carabiner of my large piece, come down to a point here, and now tie my master point. So now, assuming I more or less accurately estimate the direction of my load, no matter what happens here, because I only have one strand here and one strand here, but four strands coming off of this carabiner, I have less stretch here, and therefore, predictably, most of my load will go to this piece. However, it is supplemented by the fact that these two pieces are indeed taking some of the load off of that piece. Now, in the event of any kind of failure of these two pieces over here, most of the load will all be on this piece already, thereby limiting the amount of shock load this whole system experiences in the first place. It should be noted that again here, I've made sure that there's at least one good component to this anchor. That thing, those things, that thing, these things. All right. <laughs> so equalization doesn't happen in the real world. However, we can rest assured that so long as we are striving to place good protection every time, we will have no trouble ensuring that our loads don't exceed the holding power of our gear. Our systems must have at least one good piece. Otherwise, we must strive to find another solution. An anchor without this certainty is not an anchor. We are all going to build a lot of anchors in our climbing careers, and we'll have ample opportunity for this. But let's make sure that what we are clipping into is something we know we can rely on, and when necessary, is built with intention to detail rather than just blindly pursuing a rule book. We should all be able to take a step back at our anchors and be excited to show our partners just how good they are. Thank you again, everyone. I hope that this video finds you well, despite this incredible situation we all find ourselves in. I hope you're staying positive, motivated, and ready to get back out into the mountains with an even bigger appreciation than before. If you haven't already, hit the like button on this video and share it if you found it useful. Comment if you have any questions that I can answer and subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you catch my next video. If you're able, donations to the account listed below in the description is a great way to help support this content and to help it grow. Thank you to everyone who has donated, and my first video answering donor questions will be out next week. Until then, stay safe and healthy, and we'll see you next time.